I remember when we first started working with some of the partners on this, I think we were, you know, in under, under a research kind of lens, thinking about what could this, what new diagnoses could it come up with or what new insights might it have. And what was really a, a really key moment for us, I think, was noticing that we had developed an agent that can take all of the multimodal data about a patient's chart, organize it in a timeline in chronological fashion, and then allow folks to click on different parts of the timeline to ground it back to the note. And just that, which doesn't sound like a really interesting research paper, uh, it was mind blowing for, for clinicians who, again, as you said, spend a great deal of time, often outside of their typical work hours, trying to organize these patient records in order to go present at a tumor board. And a tumor board is um, a critical meeting that happens at many cancer centers where specialists all get together, come with their perspective, and make a comment on what would be the best next step in treatment. But the background in preparing for that is, you know, again, organizing the data. But to your point also, what are the clinical trials that are active? There are thousands of clinical trials. There's hundreds every day added. How can anyone keep up with that? And, and these are the kinds of use cases that start to bubble up. And you realize that a technology that understands concept, concepts, context, and can reason over vast amounts of data with a language interface, that is a powerful tool. Even before we get to some of the you know, unlocking new insights and even precision medicine, this is that idea of saving time before lives to me. And there's an enormous amount of undifferentiated heavy lifting that happens in healthcare that these agents and these kinds of workflows can start to unlock. Yeah, and we've packaged these agents, the, the manual abstraction work that you know, manual, manually takes hours. Now we have an agent. It's in Foundry along with the clinical trial matching agent which I think at Providence you showed could double the match rate over the baseline that they were using by using the AI from multiple data sources. So we have that. And then we have this orchestration that is using this really neat technology from Microsoft Research, a Semantic Kernel, Magentic One, OmniParser. These are technologies that are good at figuring out which agent to use for a given task. So a clinician uh, who's, to, who's used to working with other specialists, like a radiologist, a pathologist, a surgeon, they can now also consult these specialist agents who are experts in their domain. And there's shared memory across the agents. Uh, there's there's turn taking, there's negotiation between the agents. So there's this really interesting system that's emerging. And again, this is all possible to be used through teams. And there's some great extensibility as well. We've been talking about that and, and working on some cool tools. Yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, if I have to geek out a little bit on how all this agentic orchestrations are coming up. Like I've been in um, software engineering for decades. It's kind of a next version of distributed systems where you have these services that talk to each other. It's, it's a more natural way because LLMs are giving these natural ways of, instead of a structured API ways of conversing, we have these agents which can naturally understand how to talk to each other, right? So this is like the next evolution of our systems now. And uh, the way we are packaging all of this is multiple ways based on all the standards and innovation that's happening in this space. Uh, so first of all, we are building these agents that are very good at specific tasks, like uh, Will was saying, like uh, uh, trial matching uh, agent or patient timeline uh, agents. So we take all of these and then we package it uh, in a workflow or an orchestration uh, we use these standards, some of these coming from research, the semantic kernel, uh, the magentic one. Uh, and then uh, all of these also allow us to extend these agents with custom agents that can be plugged in. So we are open sourcing uh, the, uh, the, the entire agent orchestration in AI Foundry templates so that uh, developers can extend with their own agents um, and, and make their own workflows out of it. Um, so, so a lot of cool innovation happening to apply these um, uh, technology to specific scenarios and uh, workflows. Well, I was going to ask you, like, so as part of that extension, so I, you know, folks can go say, hey, I have a maybe I have a really specific part of my workflow that I want to use some of these agents for. Maybe one of the agents that can do uh, PubMed literature search, for example. But then there's also agents that. Um, come in from the, the outside, you know, sort of like I, could, I can imagine a software company or AI company that has a built an agent, that plugs in as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can bring your own agent 
um, and then we have these uh, uh, standard ways of communicating with agents and integrating with uh, our orchestration firmware. So you can bring your own agent and extend uh, this uh, healthcare agent orchestrator to your own needs. I can just think of like in a group chat, like a bunch of different specialist agents. And I, I really would want an orchestrator to help find the right tool to your point yeah. earlier, because I'm guessing this ecosystem is going to expand quickly. Yeah. And I may not know which tool is best for which yeah. question. I just want to ask the question. Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, I think to that point, too, I mean, you said an important point here, which is tools. And these are not necessarily just AI tools, right? I mean, yeah. We've known this for a while, right? LLMs are not very good at math, but you can have it use a calculator and then it works very well. And it, it, you know, you guys both brought up the universal medical abstraction a couple of times. And, and one of the things that I find so powerful about that is we've long had this vision within the precision health community that we should be able to have a learning hospital system. We should be able to actually learn from the actual real clinical experiences that are happening every day so that we can stop practicing medicine based off averages. There's a lot of work that's gone on for the last 20 years about how to actually do causal inference, say. That's not an AI question, that's a statistical question. The bottleneck, the reason why we haven't been able to do that is because most of that information is locked up in unstructured text. And, and these other tools need essentially a table. And so now you can decompose this problem and say, well, what if I can use AI not to get to the causal answer, but to just structure the information so now I can put it into the causal inference tool. And, and these sorts of patterns, I think, again, become very, not just powerful for a programmer, but they start pulling together different specialties. And I think we'll, we'll really see a, an acceleration, really, of collaboration across disciplines because of this. So when I joined Microsoft Research 18 years ago, I was doing work in computational biology, and I would always have to answer the question, why is Microsoft in biomedicine? And I would always kind of joke saying, well, it is. We sell Office and Windows to every healthcare system in the world. We're already in this space. And it, was, it really struck me to now see that we've actually come full circle. And now you can actually connect in Teams, Word, PowerPoint, which are these tools that everybody uses every day. But they're actually now specializable through these agents. Can you guys talk a little bit about what that looks like from a developer perspective? How, how can, how can uh, uh, provider groups actually start playing with this and, and see this come to life? A lot of healthcare organizations already use Microsoft productivity tools, as you mentioned. So the, as the developers build these agents uh, and, you, and use our healthcare orchestrations uh, to plug in these agents and expose these in these productivity tools, they will get access to all these healthcare workers. So the, 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 the healthcare agent orchestrator we have uh, today integrates with Microsoft Teams, uh, and it showcases an example of how you can at mention these agents and talk to them like you were talking to a, another person in a Teams chat. And then it also provides examples of these agents and how they can use these productivity tools. Uh, one of the examples we have there is how they can summarize the assessments of this whole chat into a Word doc or even convert that into a pop-up presentation uh, for later on. One of the things that has struck me is how easy it is to do. I mean, well, I don't know if you've worked with folks that have gone from zero to 60. Like, how fast, what does that look like? Yeah, the, it's funny. For us, the technology to transfer all this context into a Word document or PowerPoint presentation for a doctor to take to a meeting is relatively straightforward compared to the complicated clinical trial matching multimodal processing. But it is so, the feedback has been tremendous in terms of, wow, that saves so much time to have this organized report that then I can show up to a meeting with. And the agents can come with me to that meeting because they're literally having a Teams meeting often with other human specialists. And the agents can be there and ask and answer questions and fact check uh, and source all the right information on, on the fly. So there's a nice integration into these existing tools. We've worked with several different uh, centers just to kind of understand the, you know, where these might be useful. Um, and um, like as I think we talked about before, the the ideas that we've come up with, again, this is a great one because it's complex, it's kind of hairy. There's a lot of uh, things happening under the hood that don't necessarily require a medical license to do, right, to get prepare for a tumor board and to organize uh, data. But um, it's fascinating, actually. So, you know, folks have come up with ideas of, could I have an agent that can operate uh, an MRI machine and I can, I can ask the agent to change some parameters or re redo a protocol? We thought that was a pretty powerful use case. We've had others that have just said, you know, I really want to have a, 
a specific uh, agent that's able to kind of act like deep research does for the consumer side, but based on the context of my patient so that it can search all the literature and pull the data and the papers that are relevant to this case. Um, and and it, there, the, the list goes on and on from operations all the way to clinical, uh, you know, sort of decision making at some level. And I think that the research community that's going to sprout around this will help us guide us, I guess, to see what is the most high impact use cases, where is this effective, um, and maybe where it's not effective. But to me, the, the part that makes me so, uh, I guess, excited about this is just that I don't have to think about, okay, well, then we have to figure out health IT. Because it's always, you know, we always have great ideas in research, and it always feels like there's such a huge chasm to get it in front of the, the healthcare workers that might, that might want to test this out. And it feels like, again, this productivity tool use case, again, with the enterprise security, the possibility for bringing in third parties to, to contribute, really does feel like it's a new surface area for innovation. 